everyone. So we're going to be having a little look at our first topic of advanced hire, which is going to be computer systems. And we're going to start off with a little bit of data representation. Now at National 5 and higher, the only real data representation you guys had to do was to do with binary, um, two's complement, all that type of stuff. Okay. For advanced hire, the first bit of data representation we're going to look at is the use of hexadecimal. Okay. Now, basically, what hexadecimal is, is um, a way of storing large binary numbers. Okay, so that's what it's used for. Um, and putting them into a context where humans can actually read them and understand them. That's effectively what it's used for. Um, you may have uh, seen them before because you've probably come across it in um, places such as defining colours and web design. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of examples of the common uses that you might um, have seen it in before. So the first one that we're mostly likely to have seen it in is in defining colours for web. The second example is it's quite often used for memory locations in um, low level programming. And the third example is it's quite often used for like IP or MAC addresses. When trying to locate a specific computer. Okay, and it's made up of a combination of numbers and letters. And we're going to talk about how that works um, for a second. First of all, Let's talk about what you actually need to know for advanced hire. We need to, if we look at the arrangements, be able to describe and exemplify. I've spelled that wrong. Um, hexadecimals, but only using positive numbers. Okay, and we also need to be able to convert from hex to um, binary or decimal and back again. Okay, so the conversion and the description are the two different things that we need to be able to do. Now, before I go on to talking through a couple of examples of how to do this, I want to explain to you um, what the hexadecimal codes actually are that you guys need to be able to know. And we're going to do that by looking at hexadecimal as a base. So in decimal, we know that um, we work in a base 10, 10 fingers, 10 numbers. Uh, the columns go up 1, 10, 100, 1000, so on and so forth. In binary, it's a base 2 system. So the columns go up 1, 2, 4, 8, etc. In hex, it's a base 16 system, okay? So they go up in 16, so that makes things a little bit more complicated. You're going to definitely need to use a calculator or the calculator on your phones, okay? In decimal, let's just look at the first 16 numbers, okay? So in decimal, our first 16 digits start with 0, then go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and they finish off at 15. Remember, if we're talking about starting at zero, okay? If we look at the equivalence of them for binary, they can be fit into four digit binary numbers. So zero in binary just looks like that, okay? If we work our way up the system, that's one, two, and obviously you can work this out using the column headings if you can't do it in your head, that's totally fine. Um, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, try to do this in my head, it's hard. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 14 and then finishing off at 15 which is all four of those digits on and all four off with zero okay so those are the binary numbers and if you did a normal binary to decimal conversion using your column headings that would all work out okay for hex we only want one 
digit. So you can see that when we get down to here in decimal, we're actually using two digits, okay? And here we're using four every single time. In hex, we only want to use one digit. So the first 10 characters are exactly the same as what we have just now. Okay, so zero up to and including nine are perfectly normal. That makes it nice and easy for us, okay? It's these end ones is where it starts converting to letters. So because we can't have two digits, we then change that to an A. B, C, D, E, and F. So when we look at any of these letters later on, they directly refer to these numbers. So an F is equal to 15, E is equal to 14, so on and so forth, A is equal to 10. Okay, you can either count that up or you can have it on a wee sticky label written somewhere to make it a little bit easier for you later on. Okay, now before we go on to actually looking at um, doing some hex to decimal and decimal to hex conversion, I want to show you first of all a hex to binary conversion because that's really, really easy. Okay, so we'll just start off with a number and um, I'll show you how it's done. So uh, a simple binary to hex um conversion okay we would get a number for example it might be this um make up a number something like that okay now the most important thing about it is that if you know a number in binary is stored using hex which you would be told as part of a question or something you have to split it up into fours, okay? So rather than trying to read the whole thing as a huge number, you split it up into fours. And they should give you a number that splits into fours nicely. So this number is exactly the same as this number. And you'll remember from S3 and S4 and S5 that we try to encourage you to write in blocks of fours anyway. That just makes this task a little bit easier, okay? You then, what you would do is convert each of them individually into um, binary. So that is a 12, this one's a 15, and this one uh, works out as a 13, and then you'd work out what they are in hex, okay? Either by remembering or feel free to go back and look up this. So this one becomes a C, 15 is an F, and 13 is a D. I've been doing a little bit of practice so I can remember, but again, you can refer to your chart and check what they're equal to. In fact, you can miss out the step in the middle working out the decimal if you just use this chart. So have that somewhere if that helps you, okay? So this number here is equal to that which would just be c f d with no spaces in hex okay so really really simple to, to um, convert from binary to hexadecimal and vice versa because what you would do is just take each of those letters and then work out what they are in binary just using this conversion chart so really really simple okay what i now want to look at with you is how to do these proper um hex to denary conversions and denary to hex conversions. So what we'll do is we'll start off with hex to denary first, okay? One thing that I didn't point out earlier, which is quite important, is that hexadecimal numbers that you get Although they're a combination of the letters A to F and numbers, it doesn't matter if they're capital or small. So you'll know that when you're writing web, you don't always have to have them capitals. Um, it converts them either way. So um, ignore the fact if they're capital or small, just write it whichever way you prefer it. Okay. Now, before I do the hex to denary conversion, I want to talk to you a little bit about the column headings, because depending on how comfortable you are with maths and with using a calculator, you can do these column headings in a number of different ways. Okay. So let's talk, revert back to kind of primary school and talk about what it looks like in denary. Okay. In denary, we use a base 10 system. So our column headings are technically 10 to the power of 0, 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of um, 2, 10 to the power of 3, and so on and so forth, okay? If we work out what that actually is, 10 to the power of 0, or anything to the power of 0 is 1. 10 to the power of 1 is 10. 10 to the power of 2 is 100. 1,000. And that's where we get that kind of primary school, the units column, the tens column, the hundreds column, the thousands column. And if we want to have the number 1,241, we write it under those column headings, okay? So that's in decimal. If we're doing it in binary, it's exactly the same, okay? So 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3. It's a base 2 system instead of a base 10 system. 2 to the power of 0 is just 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 4, 8, and we know that that goes 16, 32, 64, etc, etc. 
If we want to put a binary number under that, we just put the binary numbers under whichever heading they go. Okay, so that's an example of binary. Hex is no different, it's just the numbers are slightly bigger, okay? So we're using a base 16 system, so 16 to the power of 0, 16 to the power of 1, 16 to the power of 2, 16 to the power of 3, and so on for however long you need it to be for your hexadecimal number. 16 to the power of 0 is 1, 16 to the power of 1 is 16, 16 to the power of 2 is 256, 16 to the power of 3 is 4096. I think it goes to 65,536 after that or something and then it just keeps going and going and going, okay? So um, that is your column heading and then you might be given a hex number underneath that that could just be, I don't know, 4D7F, something like that. Okay, and that's an example of hexadecimal. So it's important to know that it's your choice when you write down the column headings to work out your calculation. Do you want to use these numbers? Okay, and actually calculate them out for however much size you need. You can do that, that's totally fine. Or you can use the actual 16 to the power of numbers if you prefer. It's entirely up to you, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you calculate. I'll use these and then convert them to these as I go along, just so you can see how it kind of works with, with both ways. And I'll write the math down as I go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do an example of this hex to denary conversion. Okay, so um, my first example, example one, is... Um, a number we're gonna do um before 3d because i thought that was quite funny right before 3d back to the stone ages so what we need to do is it's got one two three four characters so we're actually using one two three four the same four column headings okay so the first thing i do is i write them out same as you would do for a binary conversion so 16 to the power of 3 16 to the power of 2 16 to the power of 1 and 16 to the power of zero, okay? And I've spaced them out deliberately because the numbers start to get a little bit big, okay? I then put my hexadecimal number underneath my column heading. So we've got a B, four, three, and D, okay? And that's what we're trying to work out. So the first one is B. Now, if we look back to our previous conversion, we'll know that a B is equal to an 11, okay? So this one is 11 times 16 to the power of three. We're then going to plus that on to 4 times 16 to the power of 2. Okay, that's me just times these two things together. Plus 3 times 16 to the power of 1. Plus D, which we know is 13, times 16 to the power of 0. Okay, and theoretically, if you're comfortable with it, you can whack that whole thing into your calculator just as it is. Make no further changes and then you'll get your answer straight out. OK, I'm going to kind of break it down a little bit just so you can see what the different stages are. OK, so the next one would be 11 times and then 16 to the power of 3, which we worked out earlier, is 4096 plus um, 4 times 256 plus 3 times 16 plus and you could either do 13 times 1 here or just 13 inside the brackets, okay? We then work them all out individually in our calculator. You type them all in. I'm going to do mine blue paper, paper style. Here's one I did earlier, okay? 4 times 256 uh, uh, is 1024 plus um, 48 plus 13. Okay, and if you pop that all in your calculator, you get 46,141. Okay, and that is our answer to what is B43D in decimal. Okay, so that's that there. And the question is, how do we know if we're right? Okay, so what we want to do is convert it the opposite way and check whether we get this answer back out, B43D, from entering this number in. Okay, so let's stop and have a little look at the opposite way around. So this time what we're going to do is a denary to hexadecimal conversion. Now these, this is where the ones... Um, the people in you who are not very keen on maths are going to struggle a little bit, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my um, 
calculator. 